Hello everyone. So, this is the next day. <laughs> um, what happened yesterday was I just turned the camera off for a tea break, went downstairs just to check on my nephew, see if everything was okay. Uh, he was just looking for his mama, but she wasn't in my room. And um, yeah, so I had like a late lunch and I came upstairs and it was four o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon and it had gone completely dark. I'd, um, it was such a beautiful, it wasn't a beautiful day, it was quite foggy yesterday, but it was still quite bright. It was actually a very nice diffused light. And then at four o'clock, you just had these really dark grey clouds and I had to put the light on inside the room just to see properly. And I thought, no, I can't, I can't record in this. I hate putting the artificial light on inside the room. <laughs> if I can, I will always catch the natural light. I just don't think yarn can be shown in that kind of light. Not to its, like... N not properly, like obviously it can be shown, but not to its full extent, so I'll always try to avoid it if I can. And um, yeah, so today is Wednesday the 30th of March, and uh, yeah, so I'll sl I'll continue on with um, just to show what um, yarn I had bought this past month. Uh, before we go on though, I wanted to talk about, um, I was showing you the cast on I had with the, just the improvised leg warmers. Let me just put this here. Um, so, obviously I was working on it last night. And uh, I'm sorry, I know this is supposed to be the yarn uh, <laughs> yarn section, but it's a new date, I've got new things to tell. So, <laughs> um, basically I cast on a certain amount. I cast on, uh, I think it was 74 stitches with a DK weight. This is on the 30 centimeter uh, fixed circular addies. And up until about this much i didn't realize actually how wide this was this is this could look like the beginnings of a sleeve <laughs> and yeah i just did not realize i mean this was technically my gauge but i had to come up to about here before i realized that this is quite wide because you can't really see the fabric you can't see the fabric develop because it's tight um it's kind of you know too tight here you don't really you can't really tell until it's quite you know there's enough of it to drape down so I made two increases here thinking that actually might not be enough but this is I think more than enough so what I've done here is I've made some decreases as it goes along and on this one I've started uh, oh sorry I don't know if it's showing here. on this side I've started two decreases here but from here I've started here uh, the decreasing from here so this has uh, this kind of shape now now for leg warmers I think um, I'm going to go on with them and at least make one and see how it goes just bear in mind I'm a size 22 to 24 UK I don't know what that is in the rest of the world <laughs> but it's quite it's a plus size here I'm also quite tall I'm 175 centimeters which is I think almost five foot nine so and I've got I've got nice chunky calves, basically, put it that way. So, yeah, I think that should be okay. If I'm decreasing, because initially I thought that would be the bottom part. Sorry, I can't. This is why I have to keep checking, <laughs> right, the camera, yeah. I thought this would be the bottom part, and then I would make this bigger. That's why I was making these increases, to make it this uh, ribbing section here, like the cast off, the top part. But instead now, I think this will be this will be the top part and I will make these decreases and to make it into a, something something slender. I've got how much have I got of that yarn? So I've divided this up because I only had uh, 34 grams of this left 24, uh, sorry 25 and 1 and 19 gra 9 grams and 1 skein so I've divided it up so this is um, so one leg of this will have 17 grams and I'm going to continue going until this finishes. Um, so I actually don't know how much um, how much that will give me from the fabric because it's a quite a dense fabric now. This is an iron weight and a DK weight on five millimeters, um, which is fine because I do want something, you know, proper for my leg warmers. I want them proper. <laughs> I want them being. Uh, I want them to be able to, you know, give warmth. Um, but yeah, but I do want them quite long, to be honest. I do want something like this, that sitting behind my knee or just under my knee, if that's possible. So yeah, so 
just thought I'd update on that. Uh, hopefully I don't. <laughs> hopefully I don't have to frog it. I don't like frogging. I've noticed that. I know as a knitter, sometimes you kind of have to frog. There's no choice, but it, what happens is that for most things, I don't mind. I don't mind for a beanie. I will I'll cast it on again, but it kind of puts me off casting on again for some reason and I don't know why but I think I have to kind of um, tackle that in myself because sometimes you do have to you will have to frog um, the Skidda nip obviously has that nip and I still like I mentioned before I'm not sure about them and I'm still not sure about them this is a cream shade and it's got black nips on it and to be honest, whenever I see them, I instinctively start picking at them, like, what, what's that? You know, I'm trying to take it off, especially because it's quite a dark uh, nip. Like, you know, it's quite, it's black against cream. So <laughs> that's a bit annoying. And then I realise, oh no, that's part of the, that's part of the yarn. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I don't think visually it looks bad. I think it looks fine. I really like this part of it. I like, um, I mean, it's okay, the cream shade. I'm not a big fan of cream shades. That's why I was using this for leg warmers because obviously it's going to go under my dress. Um, um, and, but I really like this combination, even that colour. It's not something I'd go for, but it's like an oatmeal colour. It's a, maybe a bit shade lighter than oatmeal heather from Lopi. But yeah, so I will thought I thought I would update on that. And um, another thing I wanted to <sighs> touch upon was the ranunculus that I was showing yesterday. Now I mentioned there was something wrong. Um, I just knew it just from the like the look of it. It wasn't um, it wasn't wide enough for where it was, you know, where I was. I was at the yoke and I still had the same kind of just a wee bit uh, I think 90 stitches or 80 stitches and when I looked back I realized that yes I had missed something because I counted and I recounted and um, I had 80 stitches and I should have had 120 and I've already done bits of the yoke so what I did was <laughs> rather than frog back which is not my favourite thing to do uh, especially on mohair, I hate frogging back on my hair and I was a bit frustrated at myself as well because I thought I had been so careful I was going through the pattern just line by line being so careful not to miss something and I missed something I missed something I think it was after the the ribbing I must have missed some kind of increases and um, I'm pretty sure there was nothing like make one or um, you know how you get the make one left and make one right but I did miss something and I'm gonna go back and check again so what I've done is that because I needed 120 stitches I just calculated how many stitches more I would need to increase and just one row what I've done even though I've like obviously this is going to change the pattern a wee bit I just did a uh, knit front back so I had 8 stitches and I needed 120 so what I did was I knit one and then knit one front back so knit one knit one front back and I've got 120 stitches now so I'm ready to go on ahead with the pattern <laughs> although it's probably not going to look exactly like what the pattern should look like, which is unfortunate because I do want to, I did want to make this, you know, something that, yeah, like my first ranunculus wanted to make it as perfect as I could, but I'm going to cast on more. I'm definitely, I'm thinking, I'm looking to cast on one after this with maybe a Plutolope because I'm just, I'm so, I so want to work with that yarn. Like, it's such a beautiful yarn. I guess the more I look at it, the more. I'm just trying to find the perfect, um, uh, what do you call it, the perfect pattern. And uh, recently there was, um, I think it's, she's called The Wheelbarrow on Instagram. Yeah, she released a cardigan called The Moorland card Cardigan. And that uses, um, it uses roving, it uses uh, knitted in. So I'm thinking of casting uh, that on. She had 25% off on her release date. So I bought it then, and um, and that's a steeped cardigan, which makes me, like, I think steaking for me is going to be the way forward for cardigans, because honestly, after the vest number five, just, it's, it's kind of put me off doing the cardigan number seven, you know, from my favorite things, knitwear, both those patterns I've got. Cardigan number seven is, I checked, it's on seven millimeters, so it shouldn't be as bad. 
on my hands as that 10 millimeter was for vest number five but I mean it's something there for the future I will attempt it but if I can get a hand a, you know like a, a hang of sticking I think that is something that I will probably do again and again so yeah right so that is update for this and I have one more thing to show before I go on to the yarn uh, I'm trying not to make this long. I always try to make, not make it more than an hour and it always gets more than an hour. And unfortunately, it's just simply, it takes so much time to upload if I do it for more than an hour. Right, I have... Okay, let me show you the actual packet for this. So I've got one with the ball band and I'll show you what the yarn is. So I found this in my yarn collection. Um, I must have bought this years before because <laughs> 2021 wasn't the first year I attempted to learn to knit. But it was the year I was successful. So this must be at least five years old. I think I must have got it from Home Bargain. Um, again, it was like a budget brand, but it's so soft. It's called BB, the yarn company. Uh, tested for harmful substances, confidence in textiles, according to Ecotech Standard 100. So yeah, it looked, it's so soft and, oh, <laughs> oops. Yeah, I think I squeezed it a bit too hard there. But that's what it was and I decided that I want to cast on a baby blanket. Now, my sister got married 2020 and, um, she uh, just recently moved in to a new flat with her husband and for me I am just waiting for the time they have babies <laughs> because I love babies and I don't think anyone else in the family is going to have another one anytime soon uh, but she's in London so ugh, I'd be she's moved to London so I don't know how much I'm going to be seeing of the baby but I still want to make something for her uh, for the future so this is not something that I'm going to rush with it's got no time frame to it at all it might take me a year or so, but I want to decide on the stitch pattern. So I kicked up some and I have done these stitch patterns. And because I have um, so many new subscribers and a lot of my previous ones, the ones I've had interaction with, I know you're very, uh, you know, established knitters, uh, so you know a lot about uh, stitches and like techniques. And honestly, just interacting with you guys has made me such a better knitter, more, more quick than if I was on this journey on my own. So I'd really appreciate some feedback and to decide what would be something that's visually nice but also uh, something suitable for a baby blanket. So the first stitch here is a honeycomb stitch, which I really like. It's not a stitch that's mindless for me. I would have to concentrate on it. But like I said, this is not really gonna be a mindless knit so much as a long-term knit. So I'm willing to commit to that. The second one is just simple stocking knit, which I think is lovely, absolutely lovely in this um, in this yarn. This is 100% acrylic, obviously. I've heard so many things about what's suitable for a baby, and obviously this is something that's made for a baby. But I really want to make something in wool for a baby, but I have to kind of maybe research more about what's suitable and what's not. Uh, these are garter ridges. And then, excuse me, towards the end we have a broken rib stitch. Now this little pearl bump here, the garter ridge here, was, um, I just wanted to see if it made a difference if I was doing the knitting um, on the wrong side and then the ribbing on the right side. And then this was knitting on the right side and the ribbing on the wrong side. But it doesn't make a difference at all in the appearance. It's exactly the same. So just, if anyone has experience and knows like maybe something like this wouldn't be suitable for a baby catching their nails. <laughs> I don't know, like the hands, you know, would it catch into their hands? Is a stocking net the best because it's the most flat? Um, do the garter ridges, you know, is that really good because it, uh, like I would imagine that has, contains air, you know, because it's so squidgy. Would that be best for a baby? Look, how, look at the stretch on that. There's not much the stretch in this. There's not much stretch in this either. Oh, there's a stretch in this. So yeah, if you've got any opinions on that, it'd be great to know. I don't know, to be honest. Um, they all look really pretty to me. 
all of them, like from the honey comb to the stocking net to the garter to the broken rib stitch. I think they're all really nice. But yeah, if anyone wants to uh, give some advice, that'd be very much appreciated. Okay, so recently, and at time of speaking actually, um, Drops has a sale on for their Alaska range, and they also have a sale on on some of the cotton blends, like the Cotton Light, the Muscat, the Saffron, the Paris, I think it is, and the Bell, I'm pretty sure. So I made an order for Alaska. This was a while ago because I've had it from the start of March, I think. And um, then I made a few other orders later for a few other things that are coming. But um, when this, at the start of the sale, the wool warehouse was totally out of stock for every single colour, which was not a good time to start a sale. The only colour that was there in stock was Drops Alaska in North Sea, which is this one. Now this is the colour shade 64. It is a beautiful shade and I got a jumper's quantity of this, like a cardigan worth. Very, very nice. I think this would look amazing as well if I combined it with, I think it's North Sea Kid Silk my hair. This is 100% wool as opposed to an alpaca blend, which a lot of their, like the Nepalis and so forth. And I have yet to knit with it, but it's an iron weight. Um, and I'll show you the... Let's have a look. You can see that. Yeah, so its recommended needle size is 5mm. I hope that's in focus. The gauge is 17 stitches by 22 rows. The weight is 50 grams. And that, <coughs> excuse me, that gives you 70 meters. And the content is 100% wool. So this was a lovely, lovely purchase. And like I said, 50 grams for £1.25, that's incredible. That would make... So I ordered 20 balls. And I think that should be enough for my plus size, um, you know, for a cardigan. And a substantial cardigan, I hope. Because this is like quite a nice, you know substantial wool so I'm hoping that I can get I can get that I ordered 20 and yeah so hopefully that would be enough later on I I mean I waited a long time for things to come back in stock but they weren't so what I did was I ordered from Lindy Hobby which is also a really good um, website I go to the only difference between Lindy Hobby and Wool Warehouse is Lindy Hobby takes a lot longer to um, send the package through. Wool Warehouse is very fast, uh, um, in the UK at least. It's very fast. But um, Lindy Hobby has taken me sometimes two weeks, um, or even more actually. When, when my, I think this one actually took me three weeks. There was some kind of hold up. And um, also the, one of the differences that Wool Warehouse in the UK provides you free packaging over £25, whereas Lindy Hobby, it goes up to £50. Um, which is okay if you're making that uh, purchase. So I'll start from here. So this is dark brown and I got a cardigan quantity of this as well, so about 20. And this is, so can you show it? Yeah, color 50. It's called dark brown. It's a very unusual brown. I don't know if you can see it's um it's not a brown I'm opposed to, but it's not a warm brown, which is what I usually like. It's still a very nice brown. It's almost got hints of taupe in it, I would say, like a purpley cool brown. Not like Drops Andes. That brown, I don't know what about it, what there was that I didn't particularly like. But yeah, this is not too bad. And I, I do wear brown as a neutral shade, dark brown. So, yeah, I hope that colour is getting through. Just the topiness of it. It's like, there's seriously, this is a, a, a purpley brown with the emphasis on brown, but you can see the shade of purple there. 
I'd be curious if I had a mohair in a purpley shade or a taupe shade and mixed and how, if I mixed it with this how it'd come out. I think it'd be quite cool. So this is the shade Toffee. It's number 66. This is a beautiful shade. It's a shade of caramel, sort of toffee <laughs> caramel shade. It's a very warm golden brown, a dark, dark golden brown, almost like an ochre type shade. And I've got a cardigan quantity of this as well. Hope you can see that. Okay, so what else did I get cardigan quantity of? Okay, so this is dark olive. I think it's dark olive. I think it's just olive and then there's a light olive. But this is the colour 51. I love this shade. I'm going to show a swatch of it uh, just in a bit. It's a beautiful, almost army green, but a wee bit more olive than brown. Um... Yeah, an army green green has an element of, I don't think it's a brown, I think it's a bit of grey in it. And this is definitely a wee bit more olive. It's a beautiful shade. I cannot wait to have a cardigan. I might attempt a cardigan in this. I recently bought, there's a designer on Instagram called Vert and Rose. And she recently released her first um, jumper pattern called Malwina. And it was 20% off on the release date and I think it's just stunning and it's beautiful and it's an iron weight and it's got lace <laughs> on the sleeves and I like the emphasis on the sleeves because I usually wear um, jumpers underneath my pinafores and that means that the the most you see of the jumper is the sleeve so it'd be nice to have something like that but if I can like I said, that's in the future. I've got to get through this ranunculus <laughs> first and these leg warmers. I'm not a fast knitter, as you can see. You know, I just, um, I go at the pace I'm comfortable at. Um, but uh, yes, this is something that I think I'd like to make. Um, like, I'd like to use Drops Alaska, so I'd like to make the Malvina. And I'd probably make a jumper first. I don't know if I'd, I'd use North Sea or another colour. But the second one, if I can get, if I can understand what steaking entails, I think it'd be cool to make a Malvina into a cardigan. But, like I said, I don't know if I've got the capacity for that yet. So this was a colour, uh, this is light brown, which is a very unusual name, I think, to call it. It's almost like a grey, grey beige. It's definitely not a brown, even a light brown. It's more, def it's more of a grey beige shade and it's in the 49 so it's 49 so I hope you can see and again it's got those slight purpley connotations that the dark brown had and see it together yeah these are definitely something that could be contrast like you know they look well they look good together they look like they can match very well and I only bought four of these to do a contrasting shade in if I need to do something like color color work. I always say that, like <laughs> I've been saying I want to do color work from the start, yet I can't find that you know pattern that I really want to do. And um I'm finding actually I'm going more towards textures, like you know, I'm starting on the ranunculus and I do like these stitches that I'm learning and I do like textures. I really want to learn how to cable. I think both the Moorland and sorry, that's me rambling again, not noticing. <laughs> Um, the, the camera's gone to 23 minutes. Yeah, so that was, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so both the Malvina and the Moorland have um, uh, some cabling in them. So I that was one of the things that like drew my eye as well. So, yeah, so I'm <laughs> kind of stuck into texture right now, but I still have colour work on the horizon. And I think one of the reasons why is because, and this might be controversial opinion, but I don't... I don't know that a lot of the colour work is in yolk. There's some fair isle, which I think is way beyond my capacity at the moment, but there's a lot of um, yolk-type sweaters that have colour work in them. 
but very few of the patterns I like, <laughs> like, or not that I like. I mean, I can appreciate the beauty of them in a like impartial way, but I wouldn't want to make them or wear them. Um, and I don't know why. And I think it's partially because um, I have like all our sis, uh, you know, us, we we five sisters, and we all have a very big bust. Um, I'm quite big in terms of my size, but my sisters are very slender. They're like UK size eight, and they still have a really big bust. <laughs> and <clears throat> I feel like a yoke might emphasize that, I don't know. But at the same time, even though we've got a big bust, we've got very small shoulders. We've got very uh, slight shoulders. We're not broad shouldered in that way, where uh, a garment looks very beautiful. Like I heard one time a designer, on the, on the, like a catwalk designer, saying that for the runway, they like to choose a model that has very broad shoulders, almost like a coat, like, you know, like a clothes hanger, because that's what they want. They want someone to be showcasing, like, you know, a clothes hanger type thing to be showcasing their clothes. And we don't have that. We are, our, our shoulders do slope down. And um, that's something kind of I've learnt um, by sewing last year and how to modify patterns. But yeah, so the yoke, the one pattern actually, sorry, I'm going on. The one pattern that really caught my attention in terms of a yoke to design is um, it's called the Black Rose. I don't know, who's it by? Is it by Kareen? I put the pattern on. That is stunning. That honestly, that pattern just caught my eye instantly, and I want to be able to do it. Especially, I want to be able to do it in the lope I've got. But that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> it's got a one of the shades in it is pink, and I want to. Um, definitely include that in my colour choice and I think that's one of the reasons why I bought <laughs> I don't think it'd be enough but uh, I bought two of these again for colour work just in the hopes that maybe I can you know one day cast that on and uh, this is grey pink not my shade at all definitely not my shade but I think when when you look at that that cardigan uh, sorry that jumper and the black rose and you look at the play of the pink with the brown and the beige and the dark uh, dark brown. It looks stunning. This is shade 40 and it's a very blue pink. Almost lander, sorry about the light. I know that's just gone a bit dark. Okay, so we've done this, 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 North Sea. Right, so from these shades, this was uh, the shade Maroon and I bought two of these. This is the colour 67. It's a beautiful shade. Obviously maroon is like a dark, dark, reddy brown. Again, for any kind of colour work. This is a beautiful shade. I might, I might even would have bought that in a, like a cardigan weight quantity. I think I've bought enough to be honest from cardigan weight quantities. And now these three shades are definitely not things I go for usually. Um, apart from the dark blue actually. Dark blue is a favourite shade of mine. But this is a block, these are all block shades so no kind of heading. These were, I'm pretty sure these were quite, these were all mixed shades, the ones I've showed you beforehand. Apart from the olive maybe, one of them's not a mix. Actually they have mix on them so yeah they're all mix. <laughs> I always miss that bit. <laughs> yeah, and the olive is um, a unicolor. Now, these are all unicolors. And this shade is mustard. Again, for any kind of color work. And that's in the shade 58. It is a beautiful color, but it's not like Harvest or anything. It's just a block mustard shade. It's a bit lighter than Harvest. It's definitely more in the yellow family, like a dark sunflower type shade. It is pretty. It is definitely pretty and I think it looks nice in some kind of colour work. This is dark red. Is it in frame? That looks like a pinky red on the cut. Sorry, is that? Okay, let me just... Near the lens. Something on the lens. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's fine. I always try to clean my lens before I start, but it's something I always get on. It's all this wool flying around. Um, that, to me, it's a very true red. 
it's probably got a slight pink in it. It's definitely not got any warm, like, you know, the orange kind of, or yellow red. It's definitely more of a true red, or slightly, uh, you know, towards a pinky red. But it is pretty. One skein of these, the mustard and the dark red and this dark blue are only one skein. I just wanted, to be honest, I just wanted to see what they were like. And um, this is a nice blue, nice enough blue. Combined with some kind of uh, mohair, I think it really shine. It is actually a very nice blue when the more I look at it. It's got no heathering, obviously. It's just a unicolor. I think I might start calling them unicolors rather than the block shades <laughs> that I named them. Okay, so that is my Drops Alaska yarn order. Uh, what else do I need to see? Yeah, I mentioned that this was from Wool Warehouse, these two, and the rest of them. Oh no, sorry, these were from Wool Warehouse, and then this, these three, and the olive was also from Wool Warehouse. This came back into stock towards the end of um, March, but all of this was from Lindy Hobby. Right, I'll have details of that down below. I'm going to take a break there and come back for the rest of the things I've bought. Okay, hello, and believe it or not, this is the next day. <laughs> this is Thursday the 31st of March. The last day of March, yeah. Um, this might as well be a vlog by now. <laughs> I'm not going to show you any more knitting updates because literally I think I've finished almost uh, one of the leg warmers and I will not have anything to show you <laughs> in the next video because <laughs> I've literally got two casts on, cast, uh, cast ons at the moment. I might cast on something else. I'm thinking either a wrist warmer possibly or a sock, but the sock will have to be a DK weight sock. DK weight sock. I am not ready for fingering yet, so um, fingering weight. Uh, yeah, I'm not ready for any fingering weight gar uh, project yet. So we'll see. Although uh, right now I am comfortable just with the two cast ons. So I am going into the rest of the yarn and hopefully I can finish this today. Every time I take a tea break, honestly something happens, so there's going to be no tea breaks today. Well, I'll try not to be, um, because what happened yesterday, yes, I went down and then got caught up in conversation, had to go out for groceries, came back and the weather had gone literally from like being fairly like you know clear and bright to extremely dark and it started um snowing <laughs> and this is why i never trust the weather in scotland in march and april i mean i remember there was a year uh, i think it was april where it was so hot literally everyone was going out without any kind of outerwear like there was no coat cardigan needed everyone was going out in the linen dresses and the next week it snowed yep this is a living memory <laughs> it was a long time ago, but I still distinctly remember that. So the weather is very fickle in these two months. Um, today is not too bad, but it was it was really hot towards... Not hot, well, it was warm. It was really nice. I was going out without any kind of um, cardigan on Monday or Tuesday, and then it got cold. Yeah. But um, And also, I'm holding the camera. I want to try it this way and see uh, the comparison. Um... <sighs> Yeah, I'll talk about that towards the end. Obviously, this is I'm trialing the whole tripod thing out um, to see how it goes because it's. I mean, it was requested, but at the same time, I have got to do some something that I like to do, and I find that um, I'm going to have a few issues with the tripod. I think the because I stand up sometimes um, just to view. Because I, I, what my, my biggest fear is things are not in frame, and I can't see what's behind the tripod. I can't see what the camera is seeing when I'm um, when I've got it there because I'm sitting down, and then when I stand up, then I can see it, and then I stand up from when I sit down, and I've got a feeling there's going to be a disparity in the volume, because obviously when I'm standing up and talking near the camera, the volume's going to be higher, and when I'm sitting down, um, the tripod is actually quite far away. It's about 
half a meter away from me uh, here when I'm sitting down um, so the volume is going to be lower so we'll see I'm going to go obviously and edit this um, you know tomorrow and um, we'll see how it turned out um, but to, for, uh, for the rest of it I'm going to be holding the camera and I wanted to first of all just make a quick comparison of Alaska and Nepal in terms of these two colors this is the olive from Alaska and this is the forest from Nepal and these are both shades that I really like um, I've swatched up both of them and um, the Nepal is definitely softer it's all it's, it's alpaca and um, I'll show you the swatch of the Nepal hold on let me push these back and bring okay so this is the Nepal swatch and it is again I've talked about this before it's beautiful it drapes so well it's very nice and soft beautiful stitch definition this is on a I believe it's a six millimeter very very nice and the color is different from Alaska you can see here that the Alaska is a block like a uni shade no heathering it's all one shade the green even I would say this is slightly more towards I don't know I think the green is fairly similar this is green seems to have a bit more yellow in it and this green this is called olive but uh, doesn't seem to have as much like this is more of a deeper green it's hard to tell obviously because it's got the heathering or the turquoise shade in it but yeah this doesn't have the same drape um, as in Nepal it's sturdier it's like yeah it's more firm it's got more structure to it it doesn't drape as well look you can see it's holding its shape whereas that is definitely more floppy that would obviously feel a lot nicer on the skin but this is I really like this as well for what it is it's something that I feel like is going to be quite a strong cardigan and um, I would love to have this in a cardigan I think I just have to decide on on the pattern but yeah I just wanted to do a quick quick uh, comparison between these two not only in the shade but I think just in the field the Alaska is definitely not as soft as in Nepal Nepal's always uh, I think the alpaca is always going to give it um, a softness that 100% mule just can't have on its own but this is almost I would say it's most more, more rustic but it's still very nice. I think these are, in terms of the weights, because I used a 6mm on both of them, I think they're almost the same. However, I'm pretty sure one of them is um, 75 meters to 50 gram. Yeah, so the Nepal is slightly more, 75 meters to 50 grams, and I think uh, and the Alaska is 70 meters to 50 grams. So the Alaska might even be slightly thicker than the Nepal. But they're basically, I would say, interchangeable. That's not much of a difference at all. So yeah, I'll get those two out of the way. So I'll bring my other wheel here. Um, I've got two more orders to show, I think, and that's it. I wanted to quickly show what I do in order to just some moth preventative prevention me measures. So I use lavender and I use, I've got cedar wood as well, but this is lavender absolute. It's a beautiful, beautiful scent. It's a lot more deeper and richer than actual lavender. And it's just, I used to um, buy a lot from this company. Um, I used to make a lot of perfumes back in the day. Um, just no perfume oils. And to, um, you know, for oil burners and um, just to mix in with sometimes with like uh, bath products but yeah back in the day I used to make perfume oils and this is what it's like the, let me see if I can open this one handed but lavender absolute because it's a concentrated it's got this beautiful blue shade and I will keep these cotton um, pads in every single place where I've got uh, yeah you can see that blue green shade I'll keep it in every single place that I've got wool stored 
So I've got wool in a wardrobe shelf. I'll have one or two of these. And then every now and then I top it up. I've got wool stored in drums. I've got wool stored in some and plastic underbed storage. Every single one of them will have uh, a couple of these just stuck inside. And then I will top up the cedarwood and the lavender absolute every now and then. And then when it becomes a bit saturated, then I'll just replace them. Um, I know someone mentioned cedarwood blocks. I have looked online. I think I'll use this method. Um, I thank you for the suggestion. I actually wasn't aware of cedarwood blocks. I knew about mothballs. I don't particularly like the smell of mothballs. <laughs> so if I can avoid them, that'd be great. But yes, so, because I did find a moth. I, thought, I saw a moth that day. And oh my god, as a wool collector, I absolutely panicked. <laughs> and I can't find the damn thing anywhere in the room, so I don't know where it's gone. But I've got my eye out, out for it. But um, I will bring in my next order. So, as everyone probably knows, um, about a month ago, no, not about a month, yeah, about a month ago, 26th of February, Knitting for Olive donated all their sales from that day to Red Cross um, in Ukraine. Um, so Red Cross, that's on the ground, and helping women, children, and uh, civilians as much as they can, um, which I thought, that gesture was amazing, absolutely amazing. They, I think it was almost a quarter of a million euros. That's incredible. Like, honestly, that is incredible. So, Knitting for Olive is a company which is slightly above, I would say, my price range um, in terms of um, buying. Like, I do buy yarn, however, it is more, more of the economical brands. Um, and um, I always try to, obviously, uh, buy in a sale or a bargain, uh, you know, or discounted somehow. Um, so knitting for olive was something I saw in the background, but I'd never thought I'd purchase, not just yet anyway. But I thought that's just something really incredible, and when someone is showing something like that, like a, a support of that kind of magnitude, um, it's, it's it's good to support other people in their kindness, I think. And I thought, why not go ahead and um, make some purchases? So I bought three of their yarns. This is the Pure Silk, this is the Heavy Merino, and this is their Silk Mohair. So I'll start from here, and this is their Pure Silk. I think I bought, let me see, I've got this bag here, but I only bought, yeah, I only bought two of them. Um, and I thought the, um, this would be quite nice for, like, wrist warmers. Um, a lot of the things that are very that feel really nice to me, ta like, you know, in terms of the tactile feeling. And um, I want to make us wrist warmers, or things that are directly against my skin. Cowls and wrist warmers. I've not made a cowl yet, to be honest. Hmm. But I don't think I'd have enough for that. And silk, I've noticed, is one of the fibres that feels the best to me. I've worked with silk a lot in terms of my business. Like, um, I've had a big bag of uh, Tassa Silk Roving, I think you'd call it, <sighs> for... God, how many years has it been since 2014? Uh, still not finished. I basically, um, so in soap making, you make lye water from sodium hydroxide. And that can get really hot. So obviously you're in a very protected environment. You've got your gloves, your mask, your, your goggles on. Um, and when that heats up, um, the heat is high enough for you to be able to dissolve something like, you know, silk inside it. So one of my soaps is a silk soap. Um and I just basically get snippings of the tassa silk fibre and dissolve it in the lye water and it makes the soap very unique in that way and um, yeah sorry I thought I wouldn't talk about my I'm not going to talk about it in business I want to keep my hobby and my business separate but I just want to mention that I do have experience with uh, silk I love the feeling of silk um, I really want to do something with silk fabric but it is very expensive and until I become a really better sewer. I'm, I'm, I'm okay sewer, but unless I've got like a really special project, I don't want to invest in silk fabric. But I love silk. Probably after wool, this is my favourite fibre, is it? Or could it be linen? No, I think it's probably silk. <laughs> in terms of the feel, anyway. I love the way uh, linen works on the body, if you know what I mean. Sorry, this is dark cognac. This shade is dark cognac. 
I don't know if that's yeah, Dark Cognac. I don't know if that's their um uh, shade number. And one hundred percent burette silk. I believe burette silk is raw silk. And I take for olive pure silk. I wonder what needle that would take. I'm thinking more like a four. But this is beautiful. It's a dark Coppery brown umber, like a coppery earthy shade. It is beautiful, very beautiful. I believe there are a few UK retailers of this. I think off the top of my head, was it Tribeards or Beautiful Knitters? One of them too, I'm pretty sure, carries knitting for olive. So if I do need one more of these like balls, then I can order from there. It does, um, you do get the VAT tax and um, there's obviously the shipping when you're ordering from uh, Europe. One thing about ordering from Europe, I don't know if a lot of uh, UK um, buyers know, is that if you can keep your order below £135, then you can avoid the custom tax when it comes to like the UK border. So obviously the VAT tax and everything that you're going to get charged by the website is different. But if you can keep your order below £135, um, you can save up to £25, I believe. And not a lot of people know that. Now, that was correct at a time of maybe a couple of months ago. It definitely was correct in 2020 and 2021. I don't know if they're going to change stuff over. So it's good to check. Um, Gov.uk has all the information about that. Um, but yeah, if you can like, so even when I order from places like Holst and stuff, I will make sure um, that the order is below £135. And if you want to order more, then just make a separate order and I'll tell them not to combine. Because obviously when they combine, they're going to put the combined um, amount you spent on it and that will get you, <laughs> that will get you <laughs> the, um, the border tax again. Is it the border tax or the customs tax? But yeah, so it'll, so for instance, in Holst, it takes six pounds, I think, for shipping, which is really good for something that's coming internationally. Um, but if you want to make uh, maybe say a hundred and twenty pound order and then another fifty pound order, and you pay the shipping twice, you'll pay twelve pound, but at least you're not paying twenty five pound, you know, when it comes here. So yeah, and I don't know if it works the same way if someone from Europe is ordering from the UK. I think there is. I don't think, I, I, I don't know to be honest, I don't know, what it's, it's country to country isn't it, and this is like a British thing at the moment, so yeah, and it's worth keeping an eye out even if they change that amount, they might make it, you know, they might put it up or put it down, but yeah, £135 is the limit I make when I'm ordering from, from Europe. Okay, so Heavy Merino, and this is, they've got a merino and the heavy merino, and um, I obviously go for a thicker yarn since I am a newer knitter and that what feels comfortable to me. This is Hazel Hasselnod, 100% merino. I wonder if this is super washed. I have still yet to experience super wash. Like I, I don't, I'm not particularly drawn by it, but it's, I'm just curious to know what it's like. I don't think I've ever had a super washed uh, yarn yet. I don't. I, I've I've been told that super washed is very very smooth, and this isn't very very smooth. Although it is beautiful, nice and soft. And this shade is lovely. It's a very very neutral brown grey, but it's still got um, beautiful colour play in it. If you can see. I have to admit, you know, <laughs> to everyone, I'm sorry that, like, who prefers a tripod. I just love holding the camera in my hands and looking so close up. I, I think I don't, I just, I don't like the fact that I can't see anything through the camera. You will see in my next video what I decide in terms of the tripod. But, uh, yeah, this is beautiful. Very, very nice. <laughs> It's something deeper than a beige. I saw it. I think that was a bit blown out when I was showing you, but this is a bit better. It's, it seems brown in some lights, and yeah, it seems grey in some other lights, or beigey, more beigey in some other lights. 
but I think I got seven of these and um, probably enough to make a vest for my size, for plus size. And I got this silk mohair and I got, how much? I think I got four or five of these. Again, this is in the shade Hazel. I got it specifically to match with this. I don't know, um, this is, yeah, Hazel, this will not. To me, there is a slight difference in these two shades. Let's have a look. This is also a grey-brown, and this is a grey-brown. But this, to me, has a bit more brown in it. There's a bit of more warmth than this. And this is reading towards grey. This is beautiful and soft. The mohair is very nice, I've got to admit. I don't know if it's nicer than Drops Kid Silk, to be honest. But it's still very nice. I think I just like mohair in general. So I hope that gives a accurate depiction of the difference in them. There is a difference. There's definitely a difference. I'm very curious to know what the resulting shade of knitting them up together is going to be. Really, really pretty. Right, so we're almost done. I do apologize for very, very long. I think it's because maybe if I uploaded <laughs> quicker, then I'd have a shorter video. But yeah, this is, I hope it's not more than like just over an hour. But I think I've got a feeling it's going to be. So from my last video, you obviously know that I love Plotawopi. And I've made a few orders from them. Um, they, I don't know what it is about the Lopi brand. They always seem to be out of stock. I don't know if it's the fact that they are extremely popular and the minute um, stores get them, they sell out or what. But the the two the two ones that I really um, like from them, the Lopi and the Puto Lopi, are yeah. They seem they actually seem to be the ones that are out of stock. But the one that I was curious about, but I've never tried yet, Alafos Lopi, I cannot find anywhere. Unless I look um, towards more like Icelandic shops and stuff, and I have I I have made a purchase actually from Iceland. I'm pretty sure this is from the Icelandic store. I bought because I just could not for, wait for Dark Wood to get back into stock, so I ordered more from there because I only had two of them from um, from the little warehouse. But yeah, they come in drips and drabs, and I. <laughs> I just try to keep an eye on them as much as I can. So I bought how many shades? Four shades. And this is the first time it, um, I bought the blue. This is just called Blues. Oh, sugar, do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to get the numbers. I'm pretty sure this is called Blues, like with the S at the end. I do apologize. I will put the shade number uh, in the description box so that you're aware of what the actual. Because there are more than one blue. There's a winter blue, there's arctic blue, um, and this is just called blues. And it's a lovely blue shade. I will probably mix this with the mohair. This is what I thought about casting on with wrist warmers. I think mixed with a... Um, I've got a wee bit left of that North... I think it was North Atlantic um, Kid Silk Mohair from Drops that I used in my beanie. So I'm thinking of mixing that and that might make it... Um, a bit more tealy. It's a nice blue, but it's not what I usually go for. I do like my darker blues, but I want my darker blues to be really complex. This is probably a middling blue. It's beautiful. It's got that white halo, and I believe that's probably from the sheep. And um, this will, if I if I cast these on, this will be the first time I am working with Plotolopi. I am so excited to work with Plotolopi. I love this type of yarn. Really like this type of yarn. And as far as I know, only two companies um, do this type of roving. I think it's just Plotolopi and um, uh, Honor Ocher, the knitted in yarn. I have not seen it anywhere else, which is unfortunate. I think <laughs> I think that would be very popular when another brand brought it out. The second shade was Wine. And this is a non-heathered shade. Uh, it's just a block uni shade. And you can see the colour. See the contrast of these two. They're quite a nice, beautiful contrast, to be honest. 
I just bought this for colour work and getting one plate gives you 300 metres so I'm hoping that would be more than enough. There are some very beautiful low peak colour work um, garments out there. And I've heard it's a sticky type of yarn so it's great for things like colour work and for sticking apparently. Because the sticks won't, like the sticks are going to be quite firm. Like when you cut it, the, the yarn's going to be firm when you steak it, basically. Okay, sorry about that. That was my time up. Okay, so I hope this is coming across. Let me describe it. It is a proper wine shade. This is a burgundy shade. Um, I showed the maroon shade from Alaska. Let me see if I've got that here again. No, I'll put it in here. Um, but it's just definitely not got brown in it. It's a very deep, deep wine, pinky, pinky deep wine red. And this is what I would say is burgundy to me. Maroon always has that element of uh, brown in it. But this is, it's coming up really pink on the camera, which is not, it's very deep and it's beautiful. And um, for a shade that's block, for a block shade, it's very beautiful. This is something that would look very nice. I think it contrasts, as uh, colours like this contrast very well with neutral. I've seen it contrasted with, um, what's it called, the, the Plotilope plate I had, Frost Grass, and that looked beautiful as well. I would never have thought to put like a dark green with, um, not dark green, like a green with a uh, wine, because it reminds me of red and green, which is, to me, really Christmassy colours, but that looked absolutely gorgeous. I think this would look really nice with Oatmeal Heather. Or um, any of the brown shades, but yeah, this is, so these are the two uh, ones I bought, I, th I don't know if this is, I'm pretty sure this is heathered, block shade, but all other, these ones are definitely the heather shades, and I absolutely, absolutely love them. I will show you now, let's see. So, look at this beauty, I can't, oh I really hope the colour show. This is gorgeous. I don't even go for red so much. I do like, I do have red in my wardrobe. I have to admit, I do have some. But it's not my colour, I wouldn't say. I would say, but this is gorgeous. Look at this red. It's called Jasper Red Heather. And again, I'll get the shade number down in the description box. This is beautiful. Beautiful. This was from, actually from the old warehouse, this came back in stock. These two were from the Icelandic store. But the way this feels, there's a squidginess to it. It's so, I have to admit, I've had it in <laughs> at bedtime, just, to, you know, at night, just to like squidge it a bit. I don't, should I admit to that? No, maybe. But it's just so comforting. It's like a little teddy bear. That's not got any kind of eyes on it or any kind of features. It's just, I can't explain. You can actually see a little bit of my face there. <laughs> it's such a beautiful yarn. Um, dare I say that this is my favourite yarn? Especially if I've not knitted with it yet. Just from the appearance and the tactile feeling and just the feelings it evokes in me, I would say that this type of yarn is my favourite yarn. And I do not say that lightly because I do love my woolly knit uh, yarn and the colours there are just incredible. Even some of the colours from Holst and yes, and I've bought some JC Rennie. I'm not going to show that now um, because I want it to, to be a part of the next video. I do. I'm going to try to bring a video out maybe every four to five weeks. I don't think I could do any sooner than that. But in between, I might have a video here and there about a yarn order, um, like a mini one, or um, like I said, the JC Rennie shade cards, um, the shade book. I have made that video three times now, and I've tried to do it with a tripod without, and I've tried to, like, um, I must have done about at least a 40, 40 minutes of footage, and I've tried to, like, take out all my yarns to compare, and it's just not, it's not working because the shade book is flat, I'm trying to put yarn on top, I'm trying to, like, you know, the camera's getting back and forth. And yeah, so I'm just thinking that making it very simple is probably the way to go forward. 
and I might just make it so that I linger on every single shade um, for about 15 seconds because remember there's 94 shades in that and I was talking about each shade for about 40 seconds to a minute even and I was thought I was being quick but that was making it very long so and then if you do I was when I was doing comparison each shade would take up to about two minutes or so so yeah I don't think that's feasible so if anyone's got ideas about that let me know but I think what I'm going to do is just um, take a picture of them, show that towards the start of the video and then have linger on each shade um, with a quick 15 second, 20 second description and go through the whole book and I think that would be enough um, and I'll put timestamps on um, for anyone who wants to purchase a colour in that shade book to have a good look at it Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do I think for the next video but this is just stunning Jasper Red Heather this is definitely something that I'm going to get more. I've only got one, I think I've only bought one plate from Real Leopard House because I was just testing out the colours to see. I've only got one plate of the wine and or the blue. Um, I don't think I'll buy any more of these two until I've used them up. But this, this could easily be a garment for me. And um, like I said, I still, I don't know how much I need for my size. Like, you know, uh, I would take up a lot more yarn than the average person. Like, well... You know, like a someone who's like a size. The average size in the UK, what is it, about fourteen or something? So yeah, I have to, I have to like kind of learn how much I need to purchase for myself. Right, so I'll put this here. Now the last, the last shade has got to be my favourite. Isn't that incredible? Oh my god. Just look at that shade. That is so, so beautiful. This is called Dark Amber Heather. And this is one of those shades like Dark Woods that um, goes out of stock very fast. So I think, I, yeah, I bought this from my Icelandic store as well. I just had no choice. It wasn't coming back into stock. And I saw it, I think, in Dark... Um, I think I saw two come back into stock in Willow Bear House lately. And I purchased them quickly. It's a bit more expensive in Willow Bear House. It's six ninety nine. It's about four pounds, I think, on the Icelandic store. But then you're you're paying ten pounds for the post and packaging. So, and so I can buy up to ten. I think I mentioned this before, but you can buy up to ten in Icelandic store, and that would give you, and then ten pound uh, post and packaging. So that's forty pound. So that's fifty pound. Whereas if you bought ten pound, uh, sorry, if you bought ten from Willow Bear House. That is £60. So you're saving about £10 going to the Icelandic store if you're buying um, 10 units of this. If you're buying less, you might as well just buy from Real Warehouse, even though it's more expensive. But so pretty. So this is obviously a very deep, rich, fiery orange. Would it say it's burnt orange? No, because burnt orange has elements of a brown a caramelized kind of element and this is definitely more orange it's such a fierce shade I don't know how to describe it a, f a fiery shade yeah it's fiery and it's got the those bits of red in it there's nothing toned down about it there's nothing brown in, in it it's all kind of bright and fierce and fiery like a gorgeous redhead <laughs> I love red hair. I absolutely love red hair. It's the one thing about people that always catches my attention and I stay longer than I should. I think red hair is absolutely gorgeous. Very lucky if you've got red hair. But um, maybe that's why I'm drawn to these colours as well. But it's got the kind of... Um, the heathering in something like this in cinnamon brown is very different. Because cinnamon brown is that burnt orange with the ambery heathers. But the heathers in... The woolen it kind of cones are very dispersed and um, even, no, how do, how do you explain it? They're more subtle, they're smaller, whereas there's big chunks of red in here, look. There's nice big chunks of red. Let me see if I can, um, do you know sometimes when you compare two colours together you can actually see the colour better, yeah. So you can see those red, red bits in there. Look how beautiful these shades are together. I'm sorry, I know it's getting dark. What time is it? Yeah, it's about quarter past two, so the sun's definitely on the other side, and it is a bit cloudy. But 
Look at these two shades together. Do you know there is bits of orange in this? Slight bits. And then the halo is quite fuzzy and white. But this halo is orange. I think mostly orange. And then those beautiful, gorgeous red bits. I think there's some bits where the orange is lighter and the orange is darker as well. I hope that comes across. Let's get it with the wine. I think it would go very well with it. Yeah, it does go very well with the wine. <laughs> wine shade. I think this shade is very versatile. It goes, I mean, it's going with almost every single shade I put it against. So that's good to know. But yes, that is the last one. This is so nice. So I've got three of these and like I said, they're out of stock again in the little warehouse. I think I could make a garment in this. Did I say even a cardigan? This is definitely not a shade I've got in a cardigan or outerwear at all. Um, I'm thinking... No, I've not got... I just recently bought a fabric in this shade. Not this shade, it was like a burnt orange shade. So, there's something about me now buying yarn that's making me go towards warmer, warmer colours, definitely. But I don't know if it... May, maybe, maybe a vest, or a, like a vest cardigan. I do want I want something big. I want a big garment in this shade. Maybe even a shawl. I'm, excuse me. I'm trying to stay away from shawls for the now because I've got two. To be honest, I've only got one that I wear regularly. I wear the playful shawl all the time. I don't really wear the simple shawl that much. And um, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's a shawl. I have bought. I think it's by Albina McLaughlin. It's called the Creo Style. And I don't know where I saw I. I saw that, but I saw that on a few different podcasters, one after the other. Because I don't often watch um, YouTube, like, podcasters that much. I am beginning to. I mostly actually follow um, sewers, sew sewists. Um, people like, and especially historical sewing, I was really into that before I got into the yarn. So people like Bernadette Banner, Morgan Donner. I think it's Samantha Burnett. She's my almost like the favorite because her time period, the Tudor time period, is like the the visual look I like. I love kirtles, and that's kind of although I don't make my garments as tight. Kirtles obviously in those days were quite like um, body forming, um, and I make make sure that I have a lot of positive ease around my waist and my bust simply because of like I get a lot of bloating. Where do I have that book? Here. Let's see. I'm going to put you. Quick shot. So this is going to be longer than I thought it was. Yeah, so this is one of the first books I bought, Tudor Taylor, and it's by Nina Michaela. She's on, I'm pretty sure she's, uh, she's on a TV program somewhere, but it is a beautiful, beautiful book. And I don't know if it's Samantha Burnett, actually, I think it was Morgan Donner. That um, I was looking at the underwear at that time. But let me show you. There was a picture of us. Where is it? Ah, see, I love this type of smoking. These were like linen shifts to the bear back in the day, and the embroidery on them was incredible. And towards the end of this book, you've actually got patterns. Now, see this pattern? I mentioned before that I do an A line pinafore. Basically, that is very similar to the pattern I use. Very, very similar. I basically, if you've got, say this is a rectangle, you basically cut your neck, your arms, and then from, you measure this bit, so you measure half your bust, and then from that, this is like going to be the edge of your bust. I give myself about five centimeter positive ease here. It doesn't really matter about the waist because it's A-line. And then from here to right to the edge of the um, the fabric, I cut. So if you've got 150 centimeter width fabric, that is a beautiful drape. And then I don't, I never knew this in the first garment I cut, but I cut it straight. And yeah, so you're not supposed to do that because in that if you cut it straight here, that will uh, drag. So I know how to cut it on the curve. But yeah, this is really really nice it gives you some jackets a lot of things obviously i've not tried yet but that shape of the kirtle 
and um, is one. It's not a kirtle actually shape, that one. The kirtle shape always has a separate bodice and dress. I don't know what that shape is. Hold on. But yeah, I love this book. And what I'll do is I'll show it next time. I'll show you some of the other book purchases I've bought. But I think this video is far too long. Far too long for that. Um, in the future, um, I am going to... What was I going to do? Oh god, I can't remember now. But yeah, so yeah, I was just going to say about the schedule. I don't think I'd be anything um, in terms of these longer videos, anything uh, less than a month. Um, I don't think I can. It takes me about two to three days to edit because I've got lots of different uh, different bits to put together as well. And the longer videos actually take oh, sometimes a whole day to upload as well, and then to export from my editing software it takes a long time and then to upload to YouTube it can take a very long time so yeah um, so once a month is okay and maybe a shorter video every now and then I was going to go what's it today Thursday I was going to go to the I think it's a real producer's showcase in Perth on the 2nd of April and I was planning it to go with my niece uh, she's like she turned is she 12 no she's 13 now and I really wanted her to get I think uh, into knitting I think she'd really like it uh, we were planning it, but then we realised that that is when Ramadan starts, <laughs> right, bang on the first day of fasting. And I was like, no. <laughs> but uh, yes, I don't think I'll be going, uh, I don't think I'll be going anywhere in Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is basically the month where Muslims fast from dusk to dawn, and it's a dry fast. So it can't, it can affect you a wee bit, especially if the weather's hot. The days aren't as long now, which is great, <laughs> because it opens up. See when Ramadan falls in the summer? Uh, when you've got really like 21 hour fast, 20 hour fast, oh that's, yeah. But uh, we love it, I love Ramadan, it's a really, really, uh, it's a special time because obviously you're, you're mixing more with families. It's one of the few times in the year where the whole family gets together and eats. You know, we don't, everyone's got their own schedule, everyone's got work or study or something and yeah, so that's this, it's, a, it's an important time so I don't want any work inside that time. Um, I'll probably be knitting in that time, but to be honest, I don't want to buy yarn. That is the time where you kind of focus on charity, and you're trying to focus on upping your <laughs> good deeds, getting rid of your bad habits. I think last year, I, because that, that's the time, I know people do it in the New Year's resolutions, that's the time when I try to, like, analyse myself and see if I've got a bad habit, let's see if I can drop it or change it, and if I want to pick up a habit and I remember last year I was trying to learn knitting so I will continue with that because I think that's a very productive and good thing to do um, and what else I remember I started structuring my like I started making lists in terms of like you know things to do in a day just to help me be more productive and um, I want to continue with that last year was a year where I decided I want to get rid of all kind of um, what you call them streaming platforms so I had Disney Plus and I remember I cancelled that and I have refused to buy into Netflix and stuff like that. And um, although it's been very, very hard. And this is not, honestly, this is not for anyone else. If You know, this is purely for me. I just find that it takes away from my productivity. Even if I'm knitting and watching that in the background, I still find I spend too much time on things like that. I am very, I'm, I'm not someone that can just let things go. I need to know what happens towards the end. Like, I hate cliffhangers. <laughs> And I've always been like that, even from a child, I've been someone that I can't put a book down. I actually developed insomnia because I I, I was a ferocious reader and I couldn't put, put the book down all night long and I'd be reading by my lamp, like, until that book um, finished. So it's not, I, I kind of understand what's good for me and yeah, so I try not to um, watch or get into any kind of series or a program. Um, and it's really hard because m everyone, uh, like my brothers and sisters, they all have Netflix. They're always talking about what's on the latest. Um, everyone's discussing it on WhatsApp. Oh, did you watch? I think it was parts of Hard People Watching. or I don't know. I don't know what it is. But there's always something like that on. And that's fine for them. I mean, they're still productive and they watch that and they do stuff with their family and they get on, they get on with their life. That's great. But for me, I feel like I want to continue on not... Uh, staying away from stuff like that 
and I managed it for a year, so I'll see if I can manage it for another year. Not saying I will, but I am hoping to. And um, yeah, there's a few other things, a few other habits I've got. Maybe I won't go into them that I wish I, I'm hoping to change that about myself. Um, but yeah, so probably after Ramadan, I'll I'll upload a video, and um, next year I'll be even shorter days. I, I don't know if people know, but the um, Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar, it's not a solar calendar. Uh, and the lunar, the moon phase um, is 29.5 days, I believe. So it, the calendar, the year, the Islamic year is shorter, it's 10 days shorter than the Gregorian calendar. So um, Ramadan every year is, it goes back by 10 days. So last year it was mostly in May. And this year it's 2nd of April starting, and the year after this, 2023, it will probably start in the, maybe the 22nd of March, something like that. So it's, um, it goes like back every day, so sometimes Ramadan, like after a 36 year cycle, it falls in winter, and then it comes back in summer, so yeah, that's what, I th in case people are confused. But yeah, we'll stop about that, <laughs> so... Oh gosh, this is going to be a long one, but um, yeah, thank you for everybody for being here and for, you know, watching my journey with me and um, I'm very humbled um, by people wanting to surprise, honestly, it's it's so, it's it, it feels so humbling and nice that people are, you know, interested in this journey. This journey, honestly, is for me. I'm just making a record of things as I go along. This helps me keep me, uh, you know, keep me accountable. It does push me um, towards uh, continuously knitting and not letting this go. Um, it's important to me to continuously knit. I've invested a lot in it, um, and yeah, so I don't want to let that go. So I will continue to make these videos, <laughs> whether people watch them or not, just for myself, so that I know that look, this is what you've done. This is where you've come from, and I'm hoping in a year's time, I. I've just, I, I look back on things and I'm going to be like, oh my god, you have come so far. So, yeah, it's great that people want to see that as well. And um, I really hope there is some benefit that you get. I do try to show, obviously, the yarn and shades as best I can uh, in case you want to make, the, uh, if you want to make the decision to buy them as well. But yeah, so thank you. And uh, thank you for all the lovely comments again, and um, especially the ones that are helpful in terms of, you know, making me a better knitter. This is absolutely invaluable. You don't get that. I don't have much, you know, many knitters around me um, in terms of my family and friends. So that is that is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you very much. And um, stay safe and be happy. Bye-bye.